Hello there, everybody. Well, it seems like forever since I have talked to you about this concertina. I have been occupied with uh, teaching classes and putting finishing touches on classes and things like that, but I really have been looking forward to getting back to this, and I think it's time to do that now. So it's been so long that I want to kind of page through it and see where I am. Um, these early pages are interesting. They really are. I think there's a few refinements that I might make on some of them. I feel like that's kind of, there's not enough going on in that one particularly. They get a little bit less um, worked on, I guess, as we go along. I don't guess, I know. This one um, is in process, and then we get to the point where they're really um, still very rough. So that's the way this always works. I know I've talked to you about that before, um, that you know the first page gets worked on the most because that's the one you look at. Now what I noticed as I was looking through it, uh, this page has troubled me since the very beginning and I'm still, it's, it's okay, but it still needs something. And as I look through it, I noticed that I really like this, um, these letters. I'm always interested in topography and I also love that, but that takes forever to dry. So if I do something like that, I'll do it at the end. But this page is mostly very dark. So what I did was grabbed a Posca pen, a white Posca pen, and I made those with this stencil. It's very thick, it's an engineering type stencil, so it's not meant for pushing paint through so much as it is for um, writing through. So we're gonna try that with these. I'm sure that that's the way I did it with the black ones. And we'll see how it goes. And I think what I want here is a line along this edge. So let's see what happens if I do that. I like to turn the stencil upside down. It's sticking on all the little edges underneath the uh, underneath the stencil too, the little edges of paper and the lips of paint, so. But that's okay, good enough is good enough. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I have another one here that is a smaller size. I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not. I'm thinking maybe, I'd sort of like it to go the same way, but I wanna make sure that that's dry first before I do that. So I'm gonna set my timer for um, 20 minutes. Oops, I don't have 20 minutes set up. Well, we'll go for 30 minutes and we'll see how we do. Always works best to um, break these things up a little bit. Yeah, that's going to stay wet for a little while, so I'll come back to that. Let's see what else I can do. I felt like this page, I think this one feels pretty complete to me right now. Yeah, that one feels done. This one, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more typography on it as well, so let's see. Stretch that out a little bit so I have a flat surface to work on. Of course, there's always a million things in the way. And in this case, I think I'm going to... It's interesting how I always go. This is something I notice about myself and something that I challenge you to do as you work too, is notice what you usually do and maybe do something different. So I almost always work um, perpendicular angles. So what would happen if I put this at a bit more of a um, angle? Okay, that's interesting. What about, I got some paint that kind of crawled underneath and you know, I don't care a few numbers up here maybe. I like things that go off the page. And I would kind of like a second layer of those, I think. I'm gonna try and be careful not to rub it up against that or the P 
paint will run, or, you know, smudge. Be the six as well. Just like that. And then create something a bit different. So try smaller letters over here. Let's see what would happen if we had that. That tip won't even go through that stencil. Okay, so that won't work. Okay, I'm just looking at this first page again and I'm noticing that I like what happened with that and I would like more of that. I kind of wish they were a little bit bolder, but um, you know, this is what I've got, so I'm gonna just work with that. I think I'll go this time maybe with, I'm gonna let it overflow onto this edge a little bit, or onto this side. These Posca pens, if you have not worked with them a lot, you will notice that they work a lot better when you pull. If you push, they skip and um, spatter paint. So that's one of the tricks is to, um, you know, not push away, especially with an angle on your pen tip like this. Always with the threes, you know me with the threes. I think that helped this page a ton. So I'm gonna just leave that be for now. Once they get close, I start doing just a little bit of something and then I leave it and see, you know, come back to it later and see what I think. So this one, it's close, but I feel like I could like, Pretty similar to what I did there with the seven. About that. Oh, and I just had an idea, so let's give that a try. What if I took a oops? Here, I've got a big fat Posca pen. Let's try that. I was thinking about a crayon, but let's go with a big fat Posca pen and see what happens. <laughs> We've got a lot of marks. Let's see. I like that it's not as black as the uh, paint lines underneath. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. And what could I do? Yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that for right now. It's so easy to go too far. I'm trying recording with earbuds to see if that helps a little bit with the quality of the sound. So I suppose you could probably hear me drinking in the side here. It's tea. Let's see. This page right here. I could use something similar but in white. 
so I have a big fat black Posca pen. I tried to pull out the things that I thought I would need, and of course I didn't quite get all of them. What if that was a... test, right? It's sort of I'll think about that now. That's my focal point. So I don't want to draw too much attention. If I look at just this, that's pretty pleasant over there. Maybe some white paint in lines like that later. So that brings me to this page. And what I was thinking about with this, I've got a uh, brown um, Neo Color 2. It's not the same, it's similar to this. So I thought, what if I just kind of drew some lines here? nice thing about this is if you don't like it, you can always wash it off, and I don't like that, so let's wash it off. I'm just going to squirt a little bit of water on a rag. This is an old bed sheet that I picked up at um, Goodwill, and um, I often I use the ones that have worn out around here, too, and Gosh, I get paint on them and they just become so beautiful and I use them for various things. A friend of mine recently gave me a gift with a strip, tied up with a strip of one of her rags. So there's all sorts of uses for these things. We don't have to throw them away. Okay, so... Hmm, I'm feeling like... I like that mark. I like the black dots. If I put more black dots over in here. So I'm going to pause the camera and go look for my black dots. Okay, as I was starting to look for those black dots, I had a couple of thoughts. Um, this is my focal point here. That's where the most stuff is going on, the highest contrast. So I don't want to compete with that. And what about variety, right? I want to change things up. So I thought these are kind of broken up dots, which I like. I also like this pattern. So I'm trying to decide which one that's going to become, that's going to grab the eye more. I think I'm going to go with these and I'm going to go with um, not quite black. So I've got some black and gray over here that I'm mixing together to make it um, something that won't be quite as, um, you know, want it to grab your attention quite as much, and yet will still be uh, you know, breaking up the surface a little bit. Oh, I don't like how that happened. Let's see. A little rag. Oh, sort of interesting, though. I guess the dots somehow got bigger. Must have moved the stencil. Okay, so I like that. What if I went over that again with some white? So I'm just taking the same sponge. And I kind of want to let that dry. So what if I put a little bit of those over here, maybe? Oops, yeah, that was too wet. This is a, uh, not a heavy body paint that I'm using, so it's crawling underneath the stencil too much. Let's see. So let's get a heavier body paint out.
<laughs> okay, that didn't work very well either. Let's see. Still kind of like it though. Think about this for a minute. Get my sponge. What I don't like about it is that it goes off into another direction, or it's too linear. So I wanted to get this paint all over everything, make it a little bit less. What if it came across here? Ugh, nope, it's just not gonna work. have to decide if I really don't like it or not. I'm not overly picky with my stencils, but I do try and get the excess paint off of them. Okay, so that carried into here a little bit. So now I would like to have a few more of those elsewhere, so let's see if I can't. Hmm. Don't hear the little shaky thing shaking in there. helps with that page. Now with this page, let's do something similar. Those are very similar sized dots, but I have more control over them this way. Busy. That worked pretty well. Okay, I'm not sure that that's complete, but I'm ready to move past it for right now. This one is interesting. I like, I like these lines. Just made those with a brush. I kind of want to see
So I'm always trying to connect one page to the next page and integrate the various bits of collage into the whole in some way. I feel like I might have made a little bit of an error with that too because these are both the same sort of length. I kind of like to see that one be shorter. Yeah, that's better. So that's kind of interesting. So that gets me, hopefully all these are dry, that gets me to this page that is closer, but still not, I'm running into stuff all over my table, that's why this keeps getting turned and pushed out of the camera edge. This one is still kind of, Ah, shoot. Okay, I'm having troubles with my paint. All right, I think it's time for me to stop and let this paint dry. So I'll see you in the next video. I promise it won't be as long until you see me next time.